of the groups are already over and we have the two teams that qualify, but not all of them yet. We still have around six more matches to be played or five, but in two hours, so stay tuned for that. And I believe we're going to make a commentator swap right now. I'm not too sure. Yes, I believe so. So for those that didn't really love us as commentators, you're in a lucky day. For those who are not, we promise that we will be back for the next weekend though, right Lame? As usual, yes. I mean, we don't fire with him, Sai What? what? <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Oh yeah. Oh. Well, the first one. <laughs> Still. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and with that being said, as soon as we get the new commentators in, we'll be introducing them. And with that, we'll see you. I mean, I will see you on the next week, and probably the same for us name. And see yes, that we have the. So. Before leaving, say hi, quick chat, everyone looking the stream to Doomsday and Rayman. Uh, I right. think it's Rhyme actually, it's I'm right. not too sure. It's Rhyme, okay, hello Rhyme. Hello. How's it oh, going people? Oh no, I feel like I'm being objective. <laughs> <laughs> it's the brick connection. It really is. Oh. People see a British person on the internet and they immediately go, oh, it's the voice, it's the accent. But no, I'm just here to show off how pointless what my OSIN knowledge is really. Aww. Oh. Seems good. Alright, well, we'll see you around and probably next week. See ya! See ya, Selene. And Juan, cheers for commentating for us people. <laughs> Have a good one, man. But yeah, next match now is gonna be Canada. Versus Israel, the Canadians, really strong team, one of the stronger ones in the high seed. Going up against the bottom seed of their group, Israel, which unfortunately hasn't been the uh, the kind of weekend they'd want. But they're looking to try and uh, knock Canada kind of down a peg, perhaps even keep them from going through. At the moment, it is possible, I believe. But as far as I know, Israel is out. They're just playing for pride here. Oh, ice cream cake. This is the. Oh, this is the one the Bubble Man FC'd in this war, wasn't it? This is the uh, very stream space thing. Yeah, when I mean, we played uh, this in the warm up earlier between uh, UK and. Uh... What's the name of the world? Um, Hong Kong? Down now. It's Hong Kong, yeah. Um, yeah, the Hong, Hong Kong, Kong where they decided that they would actually just all play like gods, which is very inconsiderate of them for the UK's chances, but what can you do? Yeah. Actually, that uh, leaves a really good. Uh thing later on because of course Brazil is going to be facing Sweden and if Sweden wins that match Hong Kong will go through so it's not like they were just playing for nothing there and I think if they get through the way they played today was incredible really. They they had um was it like three four FCs on it? Like full FCs on the thing? Yeah uh, out of the six maps we played four of the maps were full FCs it was something else. I don't think Bowman FC'd every single one, or was it all but one? I can't remember. But that was also quite impressive. Yeah, I think it was. He had a good game, but Hong Kong were too strong. But yeah, this map is incredibly uh, technical. You can see now those space streams. Super insane. Definitely the kind of map you see later on. Nothing like this in the pool right now, but... Safe to say. Most technical maps in this pool, if you can do this one well. I'll be just fine. And I imagine Canada will be doing well on it. At the moment they have Kyle, Kaifin, Vinxis, and Corrales in. Some of the sub players in there on this one. I actually knew Kyle from uh, Dota 2 completely differently. Like, and like he's just been much better at me, much better than me at this game for a very, very long time. I think the hard thing about this map actually is the fact that the stream basically just completely changed direction when they're spaced. Like you have to, it's almost in this one direction, and then as soon as it hits the slider, you have to go almost perpendicular, and it's very, very irritating if you're not keeping an entire focus on it. I imagine Corrales and Kyle having a nightmare of a time with this hidden and hidden hard rock. Bloody hell. Seeing a lot of people breaking on this. No, not many combos on this, but getting the hardest thing out of the way first. 
On the uh, Israeli side as well, in the game right now, we have Kisama, Fukizi, Hirokusa, and Kyoko. No movement for the warm ups, but I assume they'll have him around. They must have him around for this one, the captain, the highest ranked player. Kyoko, also a very high ranked player. You see, he has the uh, highest score in the uh, the game right now. Yeah, he really does. Sphinx is coming out with the... He had the highest combo, but he hasn't done quite so well on the accuracy. you got Kaifen sitting there. He's doing pretty good in that regard. Kyle, unfortunately, Hidden Hard Rock was made it quite difficult. He failed at the very beginning, I think. But uh, that's all around a pretty decent showing. I think Kyle was uh, failed the entire time. Kisama failing at the end there as well. That map is just a bit evil, really. It's just it's just the space streams in the uh, chorus, because it's the, the it just literally goes perpendicular, and then you have to try. It. It's one of those streams, like you know the uh, Sky Star streams in Axiom. You know the ones where they go like um, back and forth very very quickly. It's you can't yeah. actually read your way through that. You actually you have to consciously um, do something very strange with your cursor. You can't uh, read it and just do it naturally because they're that far apart. It's a very similar thing, I think. You have to essentially just look at the whole pattern and just go back and forth with the rhythm, really. Try snapping to those notes, you're going to have a terrible time. Yeah, so... Do we have one more warm-up? Yeah, looks like that was uh, Israel's warm-up, so... Getting uh, Canada's one going in a moment. Ooh, what is this? Hypersonic, oh dear. 2DX tune. Can't say I know the map though, but they're always uh, really technically complex with them wise. Um, 5.5 stars, 2 minutes long, 175 BPM, so uh, it seems like a. Oh, it's Cause K, so it's gonna probably be technical. Probably gonna have some obscure amount of doubles in it. it sounds like it's pretty technical actually. You can just hear it. That's the thing with these uh, Bimani style tracks. You can just hear what's mapped to. They're always so complex. You can feel the single tap pattern being slightly annoying when it goes one, two, three, four, five. Like every single map which has that little sound clip in it is always extremely annoying at that point. No surprise for the, uh, the 2DX music. Aza comes in for this warm up for Canada. Oh boy. So, a uh, very popular player. I'm sure many of you know him. Very uh, solid, hard rock, hidden hard rock player. Played in a lot of tournaments. Certainly one of the more experienced players on this uh, Canadian team. Well, the thing I noticed about Azer is a lot of them. He's a tablet player, but his aim is very, very um, robotic almost. It's, it looks almost like a mouse, but it's just very, very smooth, which is quite nice to watch. You can see it on all the plays. I oh, imagine he drags it. or something. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm not quite sure. So Aza and Kurokusa are using Hidden. Everyone else going with no mod, so I'm not missing that. Starting off relatively slow. Oh, yep, we have a few doubles already. Okay, least, those sliders uh, are a bit tricky. At least the mod choices on this one are a little bit more reasonable, I think. <laughs> what? Those slider squares are... Oh god, those streams! That was okay. Very cool. The sliders are also going a bit ham at this point. You said this was 5.5 stars, I yeah. think. That's a little bit underrated, just a wee bit. I think it's what the kick sliders and just sliders in general due to the uh, star rating system. Oh, that little stream on Hidden must be extraordinarily annoying because the, the second more space stream is hidden under a stack. These sliders are getting a bit... Those double sliders are absolutely... They just look evil. And that was actually a repeat slider, the uh, rather circular one. So we got... Not many combos, really. We've got Karada sitting on 120, 150 now. 
to have a single an A. We've got two people who could potentially get an A at this point, Kyoko and Kaifin. And Canada seem to be in the lead at this point, and the map is once again going to go through the 1, 2, 3, 4 section, and sliders are everywhere. Those hidden players just can't get a combo together, no, but no surprise really. Yeah, it's just... Oh, that it looks... that looks quite fun. Kyoko's building up quite a combo, same with Kaifin really. They're both doing very well. Yeah, Kyoko... Absolutely carrying his team right now. He has over half the score. Unfortunately, it wasn't quite enough, but thankfully it is the warm-up, so I'm sure he'll have plenty more chances to carry. Kisama, unfortunately, um, he had some difficulties maintaining accuracy, but the C seems to be the letter of the match so far. It's a solid D pass. You really don't see many of those. Not really. But that was an insane map. Looks like a lot of fun. I'll have to go grab that and play it afterwards. But we are I'll, about to get I'll into the rules. i try and play it and make mistakes. <laughs> give, give it a good go. Everyone's rolling. Is we run, uh, won the roll, so Canada will get first to ban here. So, what do you think Canada are going to ban? I think mostly everyone's going to be not really looking towards the opponents, they're going to be just thinking, what do we really not like playing? That's pretty true. I imagine at this point, Canada will be just banning what they're least comfortable on, really. Especially because I imagine they don't have that much intel on the strengths of the team. It's usually best to just ban your own weaknesses anyway, because you know those much better. Cause you, can, you can very easily misinterpret your opponent from the top players or whatever. I do imagine Israel's going to be banning Hard Rock. Canada have so many Hard Rock specialists in their team. They must surely not want to go against them on those mods. Yeah. Okay, we Aza decides to ban out the Jukai Girl map. That is the 216 BPM AR9 really annoying single cap map, which just has... You just need to basically snap the whole way through and be very, very persistent with it. Otherwise, you will miss quite sporadically. Yep. Every old school map getting banned there. Yeah. Mm-hmm, yep. As expected, Utopia, Hard Rock has been banned from Israel. That's a short one. I imagine they would have banned a longer one because that's the kind of thing you'd figure Hard Rock players would want to go for because you know there's longer yeah. maps. Hard Rock more players than those. You see, most people can, most players can play a hard rock map if it's short enough and they can maintain good accuracy, but it's like when it gets longer and longer that you actually need the consistency that comes with playing hard rock a hell of a lot. Players like Aza, he's got experience playing quite long hard rock maps, and a fair few of Canada Canadian players are quite familiar with that. It's like if you, if you play DT a lot, then you can probably play hard rock for a certain amount of time, but it's just the smaller circle size and the repetitive patterns that often happen with hard rock and longer maps that I mean you need to have that little bit of consistency. I suppose I can see why in the sense that Utopia has more space dreams and generally trickier patterns, even though it is very short, like you say. The uh, other part of pick, how do you do, is very standard. It's just jumps with some very low space streams. So uh, perhaps Israel just feel like that is okay for them. But... Yeah, I feel that once, when you get lower and lower in BPM, it becomes more and more, um, it becomes more almost tempting to miss, if you know what I mean, on, on space streams with Hard Rock. It just feels very easy to just kind of not stream or just to miss out notes. Whereas if the BPM is quite higher, you kind of like play it automatically and it feels much smoother and easier. First map is in Altail. No mod pick. One of the more safer ones. We've seen lots of full combos on this. And we've seen multiple uh, teams that we've had eight players full comboing. And with this level of player, I think we'll see a similar thing here. We'll see, we'll see a lot of uh, full combos. It's going to come down to that accuracy. And on the accuracy front, I'd have to give the edge to Canada, just simply because they're used to playing much higher overall difficulties. They're used to much stricter timing windows. But alas, we'll see how they do on this one. It is the first map. They may still be easing in, so... I think this is one of the safest picks that they can go for. If you just feel that all your players are fairly consistent and you're all accurate, then why not? 
Whereas there are like slightly more dangerous uh, no more picks, which you've got the the AR8 one, which is always a bit fantastic. That's Skycat, I believe. And then you've got the uh, the Skystar map, which has a BPM that doesn't seem to stay the same for more than about five seconds. So in terms of no more, this is fairly cookie cutter as they come. Looks like they're not going to be uh, swapping out any players for this one, just going with the uh, same lineup as that last one up. Getting into it now, just about to start in this first match between Canada and Israel. Canada looking to seal this spot in the round of 16. Trying to take first place possibly, but if Israel can knock them off the perch, Canada might be going out, so they really can't afford to dilly-dally uh, dilly here, here we go. This is, this is, if there was a time for Canada to play at their best or at least not make horrible mistakes in this it would be now so i'm gonna go into the start of the map it's going to be starting relatively soon we'll be seeing people playing the slow sliders sliders at the beginning everyone loves that bit and then it gets more into the the streamy bit and that's where the accuracy starts to come in it's very relaxing the start of this map don't you think yes yeah, tune is really nice and azer and oh a fair few people from the Israel side starting to get the earlier hundreds. Yep, just getting used to the rhythm. You see it quite a lot, uh, a lot of players losing a bunch of accuracy in the first 20 minutes or so. Yeah, so we got early on. We got fairly low accuracy being maintained by the Israel side. Uh, Canada seems to be doing pretty well. Everyone's sitting above 99. Um, and for the most part, this is could be continued to expect, really. It's just... The map doesn't really get too complex, so... But Kisama actually had a very early break. That's going to be massively painful, because on a slow section like that, no one else had any, any problems at all. Yeah, seen that's some probably going to come here. up to bite them. For the most part, uh, Aza drops below 99, but everyone else on the Canadian side doing very, very well. 99.4 on two of them. Kyle and Vixus with the same accuracy. And unfortunately, on the Israel side, they're not quite keeping up in that regard. You've got 92, at a B coming out of Kisama. He's really not having a good performance on this map. So, if nothing changes here, you can expect Canada to take this pretty safely. Vixus is doing a little bit of cursor dancing, but... Uh... This one's looking like a pretty one-sided affair. Combos and accuracy all in favor of Canada. And the accuracy is Canada's holding. Super impressive. Kayford and Vinxis there. And Aza as well holding good accuracy. Just on the Israel side, they didn't have the best of uh, plays on this one. I mean, they do have three, four combos. Seeing a lot of high combos as we expected, but that accuracy, really not what they needed against this Canadian team. Vinxis breaks at the end. But it's too little too late. That's going to be a comfortable point for Canada in this first map. Yeah, what I really love at the end of that is you can see that when everyone plays the repeated single taps with the long spaces between them, everyone does the exact same cursor motion. They kind of hit it and then they circle around again and they, you just... It's almost like a synchronized diving or something like that. It kind of gives a similar feel. And then the last star at the end. How pleasant. And nice Canada will take the first map. I mean, almost four AFC, just Vinxes with that slider break right at the end. But nevertheless, those accuracy is really hard to beat. First blood goes to Canada. It's their pick as well. Yeah, so losing your own first pick, that's not exactly ideal. So what would be so <laughs> feels OD20, man. All right. He's, he's had a bit of a nightmare in the accuracy department. Key Samer again, contemplating. He... His accuracy fell behind in the warm-up and in the first map, so hopefully things will improve as time goes on. Just channeling a Ming there, Kisama. That's all it was. I mean, you got to get the Ming in sometimes. So, what are we going to be seeing from Canada? Maybe Hard Rock? Is there? No, there isn't another Hard Rock fix. So. Oh, there's the How Do You Do, and you've got some of the free mod. I haven't really been seeing the um, the no mod one. Okay, rock song. I'm not going to attempt to pronounce it because that one just embarrassed me. It's the the south one. 
It's almost six stars. It's Everyone that one okay that seems one. to be avoiding it. Yeah. There's there's two of them, but the, the harder one is in the no mark. Oh, they've they've gone for the uh variable BPM Ashimate girls by Skystar. It's a solid attempt. I have I've tried. <laughs> Being slightly ashamed of myself, but uh, there we go. It just sounds so happy, and then it makes you so sad when you miss on the annoying side, isn't it? Oh, yeah. This one is definitely uh, one that you can easily get silly misses on. A swing map, lots of one over three streams and doubles and this. Very easy to just slip up on this, because the rhythms are very irregular. Oh, and there's that lovely bit where it's, um, I think it's the in-thirds and it's single taps, and well, it's, it's very, very slow. And you had Xarius missing on it completely. It's the uh, like 370 combo or something. It's just very very simple. But if you're not quite in tune with the rhythm, then you will just randomly miss. Seeing so a couple of uh, player changes here. Fukies is coming in for Key Summer on the Israel side. And Canada side, Corrales comes in. I can oh, see this one going awesome. both ways, to be honest with you. Yeah, I really can. Um, Kyoko seems to... It's basically just a map like this is relatively unpredictable. So, even the best players can randomly miss. Because BPM changes, no matter how good you are, you can just make mistakes. Oh, and we're going to be starting off. It starts off relatively nice and safe. And then, as it gets goes on and on, everything starts changing up a bit. Everyone's just loading in. So yeah, starting off with a relatively simple, almost doubles and sliders. Got a little bit. Slightly space stream, but it's not too bad. We got Canada maintaining full combos and full combos being oh Fukizi early missing. That, that's gotta hurt. Yeah, very early on, and the accuracy is as well for Fukizi and Kirikusa much lower than the norm. Got Canada holding 99% across the board once again. Yoko going with the double S. Let's see how long that one lasts. You can believe I've only seen uh -huh. one double S. I Oh, there we go. So we have misses on that section. Thinks is going for it as well, and Slendy as well. Oh, Fukizi at the same point. Kyoko with the SS still. I believe in you. Two, uh, two FCs to two. But it's still in favour of Canada because of that massive accuracy deficit. Oh, Kyoko, he drops. And Kirikusa, they both drop, so it's not looking good for them. Aza and Kyle both still with the FCs. Karada's dropping a bit with the accuracy as well, but... The overall accuracy difference along with the two full combos on Canada's side, as well as the repeated missing from Israel. This one seems to be going in the direction of Aza's squad. And Fukizi deciding that the spinner... Oh, no, he goes for it in the end. So Israel gets to pick. Though. Oh, yes. So Kyoko, that side everybody's got a hurt. Got a B coming up. Just overall Canada showing that they are very, very consistent indeed. Yeah, when I was mentioning, oh, that could go both ways. It was pretty one-sided in the end once again. That was almost a million of score difference. Really dominant there from Canada. Those accuracies were super good until that very end stream. It's yeah, it's really a map where if you miss, I think that you just kind of lose a feel for it. It's harder to come back into. Fukizi's not really happy with himself in that one. He's a... Making clear his displeasure with a semicolons in the chat. Yeah. Golden Slaughterer. Very quickly picked there. DT, straight away. So what do you make of this map? Uh, well, for one, definitely picking double time against Canada would be the better option because they're generally focused on hard rock, but not necessarily speed. But... This map is only like 201 BPM. I wouldn't say that was fast. Now I'd say Canada would be just fine with this. You're seeing them swapping in the right players already. Trick Mirror coming in there. 
Yeah, I would say it's in, in the comfortable area of like between 180 and like 220. Like even non-DD players can play that relatively comfortably, provided the streams aren't too bad. This is quite so. streamy though. Mm. 200 is pretty safe, I'd say, for pretty much any player in this tournament. I'd have to definitely give Canada the edge though. The way things have going, they've, they've been super dominant in this so far. I mean, of course, Israel can pull it back if they spot their ideas up, but at the moment, they're, they're getting uh, punished really hard right now by that accuracy. They just need to bring that accuracy up. And on a map like this, incredibly streamy. Well, we'll see, Jeez, but... Yeah. A map like this, if you start streaming a bit off, then you have to... The accuracy comes into play a lot more. Because you can see people start going really off into like the 80s sometimes if things start really going wrong. So, let's hope that doesn't happen. So who have we got coming in for the Canadian side? We've got one space blank for each team. Is it Kyphon coming? Or Kyphon? Yes, you say it. Tell me yeah, Kyphon. Still waiting on that fourth Israel player though. I do have to wonder where Riven is, their top player. Hasn't made an appearance yet. Like, could you really lose him right now? Around. Yeah. They just really need to step it up, to be honest. Because they're, they, just overall, they just seem to not be performing very well. You've got Kisama coming in and Kaifen, so. Oh, sorry, did I say Riven? Mr. Potato, sorry. The. Oh, yeah, he said Riven. I don't My particularly bad. know the Israel side, so I, I wasn't able to correct you. So. But I'm sure the thousands of people watching will be able to correct you just fine. Yeah. I had my head in Greece for a moment. Uh, Kisama coming back in for Israel. And uh, Kyoko, well, he dropped out and came back in. Oh, wait. So Kaifen decided to depart again after joining. Uh, let's hope he shows up again. Trickmara recommending a 3v4. Very confident in his and his teammates' abilities. Actually, apparently, Golden Slaughterer is actually the most popular map of this pool so far. Can't say I'm too surprised. Uh, Lark is the maps with DT. are always popular maps to play. They just sound quite nice. Although, whenever I think of uh, such maps, I think of, uh, what is it, you know the 230 BPM one? What is it, like, IG Kinby or whatever? I always think of that one, and I have slight PTSD from my fingers being destroyed by it. So, Kyphon is in the lobby, and we are waiting everyone to press ready. Hopefully this will happen sh shortly. Our dear admin has started the countdown. Getting stuff sold, I always like to banter about. Oh, there we go. Map 3 on Golden Slaughter. Sounds very ominous at the start. Oh. Very early drops from Kirikusa and Kisama. But shouldn't make too much of a difference provided they keep us seeing from here on out. But Canada will take the early lead. But everyone seems to be... Oh, Kirikus with another drop. And also the accuracy on the side of Israel isn't quite up to standard. Although Canada, not many people above 98 or that game. Everyone seems to be hovering around the 98 mark for Canada. And it seems to be averaging about 96 for Israel. So Canada will take the lead from that. Very good start for Canada. Israel dropping on the act, like you said. Once again, they're really going to need that because Canada and their consistency with comboing. They really need that. Oh, Trickmer are r r missing on the slider there. That, that's a bit of a misplay. That was unfortunate, yeah. I think they're still definitely going to have a strong oh, lead. Oh, Vinx but... is missing oh. as well. Got three Maybe combos not. now coming in from Israel, so they've got plenty of room to take this back. In fact, they are. Provided no one makes 
horrible miss at this point. Or oh, Kirakusa missing, although he wasn't the highest combo, so he was only sitting at 300, so that doesn't matter too much. If they can continue to hold accuracy, they can not. If the map slows down from here, they do have a chance. If anyone misses from Canada, then Israel may be able to take it. Oh, Key's hammer. Oh dear. He's missed just before that spinner. That could put them out of the running. Yeah, score difference right now is hitting about 250k. I think at this point, there just isn't enough time. Yeah, well, especially with that miss from Kisama, and if Kirikusa could build that combo up, then there would be a chance, but also Canada seem to be fairly strong. Vincis does miss, but we've got Kaifen and Karalas with the full combos, and holding fairly good accuracy with the 98, so... And again, the accuracy coming out from Israel. We've got Kisama hitting into the 80s, uh, Kirikusa sitting also fairly low with 94. Just... Canada are playing quite well. 3 0 for Canada. Really strong by them. Two full combos to two full combos. But once again, that accuracy game from Canada just way too strong for Israel. Key Samo, once again, speaking wise words. If you can't win, at least become. And I'm not going to say that word. <laughs> Good advice. I do have some integrity to consider. Hyphen states that they're picking for his soul. No, that is the map for my soul. Yeah, I know, I know. I was, I was <laughs> oh. relatively clever about it, but no. For my soul, <sighs> so this is... We've got some... Everyone chooses the hard rock this, I think, because everyone likes to avoid the AR if possible. But um, I think in the Denmark versus US match, we had like six out of eight playing hard rock. And the streams are a bit annoying. Yeah, quite space. So you do have to keep quite good track of that. So we'll be seeing. Are we going to see any player changes? We've got Kyle coming in. Otherwise, Canada remains the same. And I cannot remember if Israel have changed the player. Uh, Slendy came in, I believe. Yeah. Uh, um, this map is supposed to be kind of interesting because this is a free mod, AR8, it's old style Val mapping. One that a lot of people have had trouble on, and the mod choices have been very interesting. Uh, we haven't seen a single hidden, I believe, or if we have seen it, it's certainly only been one. We don't see many hiddens on this with this AR8. We've seen lots of hard rocks and hidden hard rocks, more so than even no mods. Oh, is Fukizi coming in for the Israel side? You just have to ask yourself if you're playing an AR8 map in multiplayer, do you really want to do that to yourself? Do you really want to stab the hidden one? Because like, it, it just. You might as well just play the hard rock, because I think that would make it far easier to read and get more points. So, just... For the most part, yeah, it really depends on the player. I mean, personally, I would take hidden over hard rock, if only because I played a lot of low AR maps, but I know a lot of people really wouldn't want to play this AR8. I'm thinking of teams like Norway, with players like GN and Toby, which would definitely rather take hidden over hard rock, I bet. But you are right, the majority of players aren't going to want to play that low AR. And it has shown. This one's a very, very much a wild card pick. Perhaps they're hoping on Canada to just. So just, it's uh, going to be the no modders in this. Let's find out. Because you have to have one no mod in either team for this kind of thing, don't you? So. Yeah. At least two players need to pick a mod for each team. You can't have everyone choosing a mod either. So. It's quite good uh, rules for creating a variety. So. It, make, it kind of changes things up, so you don't have like everyone going for the obvious like hard rock or whatever. So Fukizi coming from coming in for the side of Israel, and we've got okay. So Kaifen will be doing the what be the no modder for Canada. Oh, we've got two players doing hidden only on Israel. That is interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That that's a very that's a very risky pick there. Really, like you're saying, not many people like to play hidden on this, but Kisamu and Kyoko. Just oh, going Kisama for already it. dropping, and he's because he's not doing too well either. Yeah, straight away, it's that is a very rough start for Kisama and Kyoko okay. as well. At the so we've got one player on Israel maintaining full combo as to the four on Canada. So Canada still have the four FC Dream going on. Um, it's not quite the same for Israel. Uh, Slendy is going to miss as well. 
We do have one player from Israel, uh, well, now two above the 90% mark, so things are looking up in the accuracy department. I, I must question their decision to go for the uh, hidden AR8 pick, but... Uh... I get the feeling that they were just, you know, they were under the, the caution, they just said, sod it, we're just going to pick this because we can. Yeah. Oh, Kyoko's not doing too bad. He's got good accuracy. He's having difficulty holding up combo, but that's probably to be expected. Trickmer is going to miss with the hidden hard rock. So, he's done a little bit of a thing with this cursor there. But Kyphon, Kyle, and Kralis all full comboing. Kyphon with good accuracy. Kyle doing pretty good accuracy for a hard rock pick. And, yeah. Canada are just expecting to be able to take this through with a 700,000 score lead. The only FCs now are those two hard work players on Canada side, Corrales, Kyle. We can see this out for their team. They're already approaching over a million scored uh, vantage. It's only halfway through the map. We've got most of the Canadian players starting to uh, do a little bit of drawing, showing their artistic talents. Kyle is going through the slider phase, and we've got a break from Corrales, so Kyle remains the only if full combo at this point. And, uh,. No one above 200 combo for Israel, so things are looking too good. Kyle showing off again that he's drawing while he's still playing. All eyes on Kyle now to lock out that FC. Well, we're coming to the last section with a break. We see Key Sammer with the extraordinary FC coming up, sitting on a solid 81%. Oh, XD coming up from the Kyoko and Canada seems to be supporting its full combo right now with Kyphon typing out or writing out Kyle in the play area. Comes in almost 98% full combo. I mean, you know, you might as well have fun with it. If you're going to go down, you might as well loot with the smile, right? Yep. There we go. Leave him laughing, go out with a bang. And Kyle with the FC. Well done, you. Winning this match with style right there. 4-0 to Canada. An incredibly one-sided match, it has to be said. Israel gave it a good go in the first couple of rounds, but it just seemed like their, uh, you know, their enthusiasm just by the end, Canada just, just completely quelled that. And Canada will be going through in second place in their group. His real place will be taken by China, who are doing very, very well indeed. So, Canada definitely going through. Chile and Israel, I believe, will not be. So, so do we know who they're going to be going up against? Uh, is that not decided yet? Uh, not yet. It's uh, still up in the air. That I think we're waiting until the other matches are finished. Well, it looks like we'll be going on to our next match and the uh, final match of the day, I believe, or is it second last week? Between Brazil and Sweden, I believe, the next screen match. No. Oh. That one is going to be interesting. There's quite a lot on the uh, line in Group H right now between uh, Brazil, Sweden, and Hong Kong. United Kingdom sitting at uh, top of the group might be a bit good. I'm, I am in no way biased, and neither are you, I assume. No, so, no, not at all. So how has it been playing this uh, OWC so far? Um, it's been good, actually. I mean, for, for one, this is the first time the UK has actually topped a group, which is always good. I think we've got quite a high density of uh, top 100 players right now. We've got lots of people sitting around that score level. Lots of people with very, very good specializations. You've got a old man playing hard rock, so that. But I should be careful not to ramble on too long about my country's team. Because that would be very unprofessional. Oh, actually, um, correction. We're actually going to be watching the Mexico and Spain. Never mind. Yeah, so we're going to be showing the Mexico versus Spain. Actually, this one's interesting for other reasons. Uh, I believe this is Group C. This is Group C. Uh, so we've got Taiwan sitting at the top, Argentina sitting second. Um, I think Spain are pretty definitely, they're definitely out of it. 
Um, I don't know if Argentina or Mexico can. I think Mexico are out as well. Right, so yeah, they're they both are. out. This is just for this is the, this is for show. Both teams kind of showing what they can do. Group C has been the. Uh... Oh yeah, Taiwan have already through. Just they dominated in that group. As yeah, they, they have a fairly think... strong field of players to choose from. The thing with this group, though, is it's of course it's the Spanish group. Mexico, Argentina, Spain all got drew together. So a lot of these players will be friends and everyone. They're probably socialising with each other quite a fair bit in the.